really struggling here. I gotta only pick one, but how do I choose between My Hero Academia and Demon Slayer? They're both just so good for different reasons. This one's got so much emotion. The action in this one is amazing. But I don't know if I gotta choose between the two of them. I'm gonna have to go with My Hero Academia. This is what I'm gonna talk about in my next video. My Hero Academia Season 4 is currently airing and it is definitely one of my favorite action animes from the last several years. Though, is it better than Demon Slayer? That has been gaining a lot of attention lately, so let's talk about it. When Bleach and Naruto ended, I was looking for some new anime to fill the void that those series left me, and that's when My Hero Academia finally took its opportunity and adapted the manga into an anime. I wasn't completely sure about the series though, it sounded kind of fun, but I thought it would be a little too lighthearted and maybe aimed at a younger audience that I couldn't relate to. Though I did finally give it a shot and I'm so happy that I did because it was doing things that not a lot of other anime were doing at the time. In most series, we start off with the main character who gets stronger over time and especially in shonens like Dragon Ball, Every villain is simply stronger than the last and the power scaling just becomes ridiculous. But My Hero Academia took a different approach. They showed us the power ceiling from showing us the strongest character in the show right from the start. And this allowed for a few things for the audience. It allowed us to know where the bar is set and it allowed us to watch the main character grow and have an idea where he's headed. Yes, some other animes can do this in a different way, like One Piece has Luffy trying to become the King of Pirates, Naruto became Hokage, but then you got series that don't know where they're going, and then you end up with characters like Ichigo just literally being a mix of basically everything, like Hollow, Quincy, Fullbringer, Shinigami. Or you have characters like Goku, who has a new Rainbow Ultra Instinct Super Saiyan Blue God Kaioken Times 100 form. <sighs> now, don't get me wrong, I really loved Bleach and I really liked Dragon Ball, but My Hero Academia, despite having a lot of similarities to other shonens, it gave us a clear path for the characters which I really liked. So which series is better? Is it My Hero Academia or is it Demon Slayer? If you haven't seen Demon Slayer yet, I covered an in-depth look at it in another video which you can find right here and it's also in the description below. So for this video, let's dive a little deeper into My Hero Academia before we compare the two series. My Hero Academia is a world where people are born with the X gene, I, I mean quirks, and each person will have unique abilities ranging from super strength, invisibility, running super fast, and the list just goes on. Some characters' abilities are simply better than others, and some may seem weak until they learn how to fully use their quirk, and what they thought was a weak power turns out to be something incredible. Also, some characters will mutate, I mean, have physical differences caused by the quirk. Look, I know I'm joking about all the similarities that My Hero Academia has with X-Men, but it's not like these kids go to school for the gifted or have teachers with powers training them on how to use their gifts or anything like that. Despite the similarities, the shows do go in a very different direction. In My Hero Academia, quirks are looked at as a positive thing and accepted by society, and so hero programs are intertwined into everyday life, but stronger quirk users become heroes and once graduating school, must work under a seasoned hero to learn the ropes. They work alongside the police force, emergency services, and all sorts of things where in X-Men, while society hates them, they have to essentially live their lives in secrecy to not be outcasted. So that brings us to our main character Midoriya, who was one of the few people actually born without a quirk. He's devastated by this and is obsessed with heroes and idolizes them. He wants to become a hero so badly but knows he can't and the hero he idolizes more than anyone else is All Might, who is the number one hero. Midoriya sees his friend Bakugo in trouble and tries to save him despite having no powers and almost gets himself killed in the process until All Might shows up. This is where All Might takes notice of Midoriya and realizes just how pure of heart this kid really is. All Might tells him a secret that he's growing weaker and he can't retain the power for much longer because of a fatal wound he received from an earlier fight 
and his power is known as One For All. It's a power that is passed down from generation to generation, and he can pass the power onto young Midoriya. Midoriya accepts even though he is in disbelief, but before he can take on the power, he has to get his body stronger so All Might personally trains him so he can take the exams and get accepted to the UA High School. So this right here is the kind of stuff I really enjoy in a series. I like seeing training montages and watching the main characters work to get stronger so that way the powers they get feel earned. This show delivers this type of stuff a lot to us, as it's essentially the premise of the entire show, these young heroes training to become licensed heroes. Another great aspect to the show is the teamwork initiative. They are constantly working together, despite some of them being insanely powerful, they all still have a lot to learn, but together it allows them to handle situations they otherwise wouldn't be able to on their own. There are times when the situation gets so bad that All Might steps in to save the day, but in those cases, the kids will then be useful doing something else instead of just standing around. Kind of like the total opposite that you see in Dragon Ball, where Goku will be fighting the main villain and everyone else is just standing around, you know, doing nothing. This leads me to my next point. This show can have some incredibly emotional, impactful moments. One moment in particular, which happened in just the past season, was when Midoriya fights Muscular and has to push himself beyond 100% because he's in a situation where he can't call for backup and he has to protect a little kid. That moment was simply beautiful, seeing him refusing to give up and literally destroying his own body to get that win. It cost him a lot. It's those moments in the fight refusing to quit that just gets your adrenaline going. The most memorable moment though I think was also in season 3 when All Might is facing All For One, who is his arch nemesis, and he's already in a situation where he can't hold the One For All power for very long because he already transferred it to Midoriya. So as he's losing his power, he puts everything he has left into one final punch. And again, they make you feel so much in this scene and you just feel like you are with him in that moment, giving it all he's got to save everyone. The moment was even more impactful because you just knew this was going to be that final time we saw All Might in action, but they gave him a hero's exit doing what heroes do. His final message was, it's your turn now. That moment was incredibly impactful to me because it meant the other heroes have to step it up now and All Might can no longer save them, letting us know the real fight is about to begin. <sighs> Things like this are throughout the entire series and is what makes it truly unique and fun to watch. And if you like action animes, then you will undoubtedly love this one as well. But which one is better, Demon Slayer or is it My Hero Academia? As I mentioned in my other video, the collaboration of CGI and traditional animation was outstanding and made for some beautiful moments. I do think the animation in My Hero Academia was also really good, but Demon Slayer overall just took it to another level. Though animation isn't everything for me. Personally, storytelling and character development mean a lot more, and for this I personally have to give it to My Hero Academia. Don't get me wrong, I loved Demon Slayer, and I can't wait for the movie in season 2, but My Hero Academia just takes me on a more emotional ride, which I really appreciate. I think a lot of people in the end are going to disagree with this and probably pick Demon Slayer, and I can't really argue that opinion because it was a fantastic show, but in the end it just comes down to what you are looking for in a series, and My Hero Academia delivers that just a little bit more for me. I do have to say though, I think we all win as fans because at the end of the day, we don't have to choose and you can watch both and enjoy both. Also, if you haven't yet, consider checking out my Demon Slayer video, click that subscribe button and let me know which one did you enjoy more? Was it Demon Slayer or My Hero Academia? That's it for this one and I'll see you guys in the next video.